serious subjects uh, this half hour as uh, we talk about fraud and seniors. In fact, uh, just the way it worked out, it sounds like I, I planned it this way, but <laughs> the truth is I didn't. Uh, Carla Fails is here from Carewell Services Southwest. Uh, and a little later, we'll talk with uh, attorney Stacy Lott, who has similar things on her mind as well. And so we'll... Uh, We'll bring you both of those, but uh, if you're a senior or you uh, are related to one or no one, this is information you should hear, including uh, information about some programs that are coming up fairly soon in uh, September, in fact, that help address some of these issues. So uh, let's get started. Carla Fales is here from Car uh, Carewell Services Southwest also known today as the birthday girl. That's right. Happy birthday. <laughs> Thank you. Now we know why Carla and I, all, I call her, can you, you want to come and visit us? Yeah. And we always, uh, we're always, you know, on the same page. We're always on track because you're, you're a Leo and so am I. That's so right. There Gotta we go. stick together. <laughs> we usually do. That's right. Uh, I do have a Leo friends and we're sort of the same way. We do. Know? Yeah. We do. Uh, so fraud and seniors, but we'd like to say that, um, we could put ourselves out of business by eliminating some of these problems, but uh, they just keep coming back, don't they? They sure do. A lot of, a lot of persistence by those who uh, right. target older adults. And, uh, you know, there's there's some good reasons for that. Um, you know, part of it is 70% is of our wealth is and savings are held by older adults. Right. And so that can make them a target, that idea that there's a nest egg available. 70% um, of the wealth held by yep, older adults. Yep. It just makes sense. You've worked all your life. You've accumulated it if you've been good about it, and there it is. Yep, and the numbers. There's so many um, older adults now, yeah. um, larger percent of the population, and so that makes it uh, very attractive for those uh, folks who want to target them. The other thing we often see is that uh, older adults, particularly those in uh, particular decades like the 30s, 40s, and 50s, um, common decency, there's a concept, um, <laughs> common decency and uh, politeness um, oh, yeah. were a thing. Heard of that? Yes, we've heard of it. <laughs> and uh, honestly, con artists exploit that trait yes. in older adults. Um, they have a hard time saying no. They have a hard time hanging up sometimes. Um, I think the idea that, you know, there's a whole lot of grumpy old men out there um, isn't mm -hmm. really true. Older adults are generally more polite um, and, and have some decency. So if somebody contacts them and they're being persistent, they're not liable to shut them down as fast. Not always. It's something we're trying to change and uh -huh. uh, trying to get folks there. The other thing we see, too, is the fact that uh, many times older adults are the least likely to report if there's a fraud. And that's for a variety of reasons. Sometimes there's a level of embarrassment. Yeah. Um, sometimes they're not sure how to do that. Does it really qualify as a crime? Um, sometimes it's, they may not have the capacity to really understand that they're becoming a victim. And the other piece I think uh, those who target them focus on is the fact that they're sometimes not the most reliable witnesses. And so they feel like perhaps they can get away with it if they target older adults. Hmm. And so that uh, can be a factor. So, wow. Um, the other piece is when we talk about affinity fraud, um, which is the idea of somebody close to you that takes advantage of you, is they may not want that person to get in trouble. They may have a reliance on that person for care, for handling their finances, um, for helping them pick up prescriptions, that type of thing. And so sometimes that can be a challenge. And then if we start talking about cognition issues, then it makes it really difficult. Right. Wow. This is all... Uh making your head spin i think just listening to some of this yeah so uh, we'd like to be able to say that uh, the attempts at this are not always successful but the truth is they are very successful it's a profitable business unfortunately for uh, for the crooks um americans lose about 40 billion dollars each oh year to fraud and so if you look at that with the 40 billion if 80 percent of those dollars are coming from older adults that's a chunk of change. Right. Um, one number that I really thought was telling as I thought about it is sweepstakes related frauds alone in just 24 states, not all states, $5 billion from older adults. Wow. And that's just half the country. It's just half the country. Wow. And the reality is, is they're not getting that money back. There's very seldom ever recouping of those type of lost dollars. I, I've been uh, acquainted with a couple of stories along those lines where people just call up and say... Uh, you, you'll get X number of dollars if you just pay a small amount. Right. But all they have to do is hand over that credit card number and it's over, right? Credit card, um, 
Bitcoin is a popular thing. Um, Western Union, although they have been really cracking down on it. Um, so, yeah, those, those uh, um, give and you'll get schemes are uh -huh. one of the more popular ones. Um, you know, we had one lady that uh, was waiting for her BMW from Puerto Rico. It was being driven here. Oh. We did have to remind her you can't drive here from Puerto Rico. We have to have been on a ferry first. Correct. <laughs> so, and it took, you know, four months oh and $6,000. So, yeah, those type of schemes are really popular. Um, they get you on the phone. That's what they're looking for, to keep you talking, uh -huh. get personal information. Um, with the Internet, they can garner a lot of information, and sometimes they just need to fill in the blanks, you know, right. like the last four digits of your Social Security number, um, the last four digits of your credit card number. That's the type of information folks are, are looking for. They can find the rest of it on the, their resources. Wow. Yep. Well, six grand for a new Beamer would be a good deal. It would be. But, uh, yeah, not for real. Yeah. So uh, what are common tactics that they're using uh, other than maybe what you've just said? Well, one of them, we mentioned the phantom riches. That's kind of the, it's yeah. out there. It's waiting for you. The other is source credibility. That's where the affinity fraud comes in a little bit. Or dropping names that sound familiar. <laughs> um, uh. So that can help um, using friends making friends with other people, um, that type of thing, using similar names to organizations that exist for things like charity scams, uh, mm -hmm. you know, the National American Federation of Firefighters or something like that. Make something up, yeah. sounds official, yep. yeah. Pity and mercy, that's always, you know. Pity and mercy. Pity and mercy. What would be an example of that? Grandma, I'm having a really rough time if I can just borrow your credit card for the last, you know, for 30 days or... You know, I'm running on hard times. I just need a little help to get me through. And your neighbor said you were you were a giving person. Um, so, yeah, the, the pity stories. And wow. generally those are coming from relatives, but they can be strangers. Um, We've yeah. been hearing, too, about, you talked about the grandma thing. We've been hearing about um, people who will call up and say, hey, it's Johnny, your grandson. I need help. And in the heat of the moment, it may not be clear that that isn't Johnny. And generally, it's a, this is your grandson, I Johnny. See. Uh, then they have a name. That it. is probably one of the most, that one and the IRS scam are the most common ones at the moment. And so we've had somebody locally for about $8,500 um, that had been taken with the grandparent scam. Um, and their tool to get the information was Facebook. They knew he was overseas. They knew he was skiing with a friend. Um, there was a lot of information they garnered from Facebook, and so that is actually how they perpetrated the scheme. And, of course, you know, we're never going to get the money back and, and never help. So, you know, we try to tell people um, it, isn't, it isn't rude to hang up. Mm -hmm. It's right. really quite smart. Yes. Um, and that's what they need to do. Yeah, so uh, some average person skiing overseas puts that on Facebook, and because their Facebook profile is not, secured and thus viewable by uh, strangers yeah. they can somehow put together that that's so-and-so's grandkid and figure out how to find that person yeah it is surprising and i look occasionally the number of people whose phone numbers on facebook yeah and so it makes it a little little bit easier and you know you can see who's related to who and I'm not right. sure that's proper English, but um, to whom? <laughs> to whom, yeah. Yes, and so yeah, they can piece it together, and then they help fill in the pieces with that shock value of, you know, I've been hurt, right. or I'm in jail, Yes. and then that switch turns off. I'm not thinking real clearly here to say, wait a minute, you know, I'm going to call your mom and verify. You're right. Well, now that we've shaken everybody up with all <laughs> this, all these uh, stories of scams, Let's talk about what some can do to try and mitigate this. I just go around spreading paranoia wherever yeah. I go. <laughs> <laughs> right. We didn't want to do In that. In a good way. Right. We so wanted you to be informed, but we also want you to know about how to deal with it. Yeah. And, but, you know, they seem like common sense, but it's always those things that we need to keep telling ourselves because if not, we can let our guard down. So right. one is never execute a sale over the phone. Um, just don't do it. Don't give your personal information to anyone that called you. Mm -hmm. You should initiate the phone call. And I always tell seniors, remember, it's shrewd, not rude, to hang up on people that you don't know. Um, the other is get written information about any type of business dealings that you're doing. Um, and if they're, not, if they're not willing to provide it, hang up or walk away. And uh, the other piece is don't sign anything unless you have somebody else look at it. Okay. And hopefully not someone that knows the person trying to sell it to you. Right, right. Um, you know, we've looked at contracts for cell phones. We've looked at 
a lot of things for older adults to say, mm, we have some questions. Right. Um, so that's really important. And don't be rushed. It's not going to go away. And that is a prime tactic in it situations is. like this. It is. Hit them and run. Yes. And, yeah. you know, there's legitimate companies. There's always a sale tomorrow. Uh-huh. But don't get caught up in that. So the, if the offer's not going to be there tomorrow, you don't need it. Um, so the one that is really important, and we see this a lot, is give to and do business with as local as you can get. So if you want to make a charitable contribution, I know some really good nonprofits right. in this community. Right here. Yeah. Yes. Um, you know, as I mentioned before, the National Federation of American Firefighters, which is one I actually looked up. Um, if you want to make a difference, find a local charity, and they'd be glad to tell you about their amazing services that they do. Mm -hmm. So the other is don't pay for things in advance. Get either 50% down is pretty typical. Your contractor friends will tell you that 50% up front. Um, the other is if someone comes knocking on your door, ask for their permit. In Battle Creek, they have to have a solicitor's permit. And if they don't have that, they haven't filed the necessary paperwork in the city. So, end of story. End of story. Yeah. So, and I yeah. think uh, um, Stacy's going to talk about the doorbell ringing yes. coming up, too. Yes. And, and so yeah. we'll have more on that at 844. Yeah. All right. So, and, and, you know, uh, as you said, never execute a sale over the phone. Even when you get that call that this is your grandson and they are going for the jugular with that because yes. that hits a hot button. You have to have your wits about you and say, hold on a minute. Yep. This may not be true. Yep. Give me a phone number to call back. Um, what's your name? Give me your organization's name. Um, you know, that type of thing. So mm -hmm. always step back. So, you know, I told one lady that had that call and I said, he's in jail. He'll be safe. <laughs> not going anywhere. So, <laughs> right. you know, and in that regard, Social Security, IRS, they already have your personal information. They're not going to call and ask you for it. Right. And so one of the things we say to people is, please read the information you have and I'll confirm it. Mm -hmm. That's a great way. So if they yes. uh, they say we have your info, tell yep. me what you have. Yep. Can you verify the last four digits of your social security number? No, no, I can't. Mm -hmm. But you could because uh -huh. <laughs> you have it. Right. Um, then ask for a number to return the call, confirm the reason for their call, and then call back. There's a thing now they can mask cell phone numbers to look local. I got I, one yesterday. I get them all the time. Yep. And so just, yep. you know, take yep. care of it that way. Comes up on the phone as Battle Creek or Kalamazoo and, and you think it's a local person. Yep. Think, eh. One number off from my cell phone. That was the weird part. That is weird. Wow. Yep. Uh, and, and very often if you have, you know, a family of cell phones, maybe all your numbers are one off. I looked at it and ran out of a meeting. To answer the to phone. To answer it. That's exactly. interesting. Right. Yep. So even caller ID isn't necessarily revealing anymore. Yep. All right. And so uh, how do, oh, let me just start here with this too. You have a, a special session coming up in September. Yes, we have two of them. One is on September 21st at Squirrel Hollow Golf Course at 530 is a dinner with a cash bar. Um, Old okay. National Bank is uh, sponsoring it, and it's going to be money safety for seniors. So you'll get lots of these tips and a whole lot more directly from um, a banker, a local banker. And then we have one at Dark Horse Brewery at 530 on the 28th, the mm -hmm. following Thursday. That's also free with a light meal. Our sponsors uh, made it so we can offer this free. If people want to register, they can call us at 966-2450. We'll get a little information and they can register for the events and All learn right. more. And these are in September. September 21st and September 28th. Carewell services with these events for seniors on uh, safety and protecting themselves against fraud and attempts to take money. And we'll talk more about this as we get closer to that date. We'll get a reminder out there for folks. Uh, but again, that number at Carewell services is 966-2450. If you already know you'd like to attend one of those in September, and get that information. And you're available. Carol Services is there every single day during business hours, and you uh, field these questions all the time. We can. They can call and talk to Mary Peterson, and she's our uh, elder abuse prevention specialist, and she can help them out, answer questions, and kind of maybe give them some peace of mind. Okay. Carla Fales, Carol Services Southwest. Happy birthday. Thank you. <laughs> Thanks for coming today.